Hello and welcome everybody. You know the drill. It's King Dumps. It's scores on the doors. Let's just get into it. Fuck the intro. Right, so obviously we're going to be kicking off with G2 now. <laughs> obviously we've got to take into account that G2 actually had like a pretty tough draw. Playing Na'Vi, Heroic, Outsiders, Fury and Imperial... They played three teams that actually made it to the next stage. They played two teams who, well, Outsiders went one and three, didn't they? And then Imperial went two and three. But they, they played two decent teams um, outside of the three that beat them. So there's something about this G2 run that's like not that bad. And if you look at their round difference, like it was OK. They're kind of on the borderline, like. It just shows you how close these two better ones that they lost were. Um, this is probably the key series, right? If you're G2 and you want to be going far in tournaments, going deep in majors, making playoffs, that kind of thing, you kind of probably got to be beating teams like Fury in series, especially when we saw Fury obviously get into the playoffs. They got banged out pretty convincingly by Spirit, so... You know, obviously you can't always kind of one-to-one -one games like that. You can't say, oh, this team beat that team, so they're better, whatever. But it is an indicator of how strong Fury were at the tournament. I think that Spirit beat them. And Spirit, I think, were one of the, the clear top four teams. Obviously, it ended up being that way. It ended up being FaZe, Spirit, Na'Vi, Ents. But they, I think, were quite clearly the four best teams at the Major. So if you're G2, you're basically saying we're a pretty decent chunk off of like a top four finish. Like, they, you know... They were a far, far cry. And I think throughout the tournament, this is kind of... Um, there are a couple of like key problems with G2. Number one, I think overly relying on Monacy. I think if a, a, a kid who is like new to the top scene, who is doesn't have the most consistent style as an Orpa, right? He, he's very much big on the kind of flashy flicks and, and quick plays and stuff that looks fucking amazing on highlights, but over the course of a game, isn't going to be as consistent of a style. I just don't think that's the kind of, a kind of player you can rely on just yet. Maybe, yes, in future, Monacy will be reliable as like a super hard carry force. But I think there is, in his current state and in G2's current state, you want Monacy to be your second or third fragger. You want him to be providing big impact, big highlight plays, but you don't, I think, want to... You shouldn't be relying on him for consistent fragging output. And he's done all right in this series. Obviously, 60 kills over series is, is pretty decent. If we look across the maps... You know, he, he's top fragged in two of them. Uh, well, top fragged, you know, top ratinged in two of them. So, like, it's not as if he's a... Uh, I'm criticizing Monacy per se. I think he played well. But this is... Uh, I mean, maybe not Jack's there. But this is more what I want to see. I want to see Nico leading the way. I want to see Monacy, you know, doing well, but being there mainly to provide impact, right? And I think that was part of the problem. And I think another part of the problem, I know he's the in-game leader, but Alexi B was a fucking liability mechanically at this major. He was whiffing so many shots he should just make, like no questions asked. He should be hitting these as a professional player. Um, He was so fucking bad throughout the tournament mechanically. It, yeah, it was just G2 were like never going to win this major. I mean, fuck winning the major. They were never going to go very deep because... Alexi B was basically an anchor throughout the whole event. Let's just actually have a look, um, you know, while we're talking about it and while we think about it. Let's have a look. Leaderboards, Rain 2.0. Obviously, shouts to Rain at the top there. But if we scroll down towards the bottom, like, where's Alexi B going to be at? So there he is, naught point. So there are a handful of players who performed worse than him. This is fucking super concerning. That was a big issue. Um, but there are only basically a handful of players playing worse than Alexi B. And actually, like, yeah, okay, his rating wasn't completely atrocious, but I mean, it was pretty bad. But if you actually looked at like the games and, and the play, it, it was so fucking bad. He was whiffing some really, really vital frags that he just cannot afford to be whiffing as a professional player, full stop. Um, what am I going to give G2? Ah. <sighs> I, I expect I think expectations for playoffs, so they have to get less than a C. I would just give them a D. I would just give them a D. Uh, well, do you know what? We're gonna be like generous and give them a D plus because they beat outsiders who are a decent team. It was reasonably comfortable. 16, 10, 16, 11 on the maps they won. Still a fucking classic G2 problem if they don't seem to be able to win a map pick. Like, uh, you know, so often G2 are having to win their opponent's map pick to stay in a series, which is like fucking problematic. 
Um, but yeah, I think D plus, like they actually had a hard schedule. They did fall short of expectations. You'd probably hope that they would do better against Furia here. But like, if you look at the run overall, it was kind of close. Them not making playoffs and, you know, swap G2 and Furia. I think it would have been fair. I still think G2 probably would have got smashed by Spirit in the quarterfinals. So, but yeah, D plus, it, it wasn't like a complete fucking travesty and disaster, but it was like disappointing for sure. Next up, we obviously have to talk about Vitality. Um, you know, it, we're, we're not going to count the challenger stage for any of these teams. I know some of these teams, did all of them come through? No, Big didn't come through challengers. Neither did Cloud9. So yeah, a handful of these teams didn't come through challengers, but most of them, them did. Um, I'm not going to talk about their challenger stage record because if you get to this stage of the major, then like, fuck it, we can forget that. Maybe we'll briefly mention it for Bad News Eagles, for example, but like, yeah. This stage is the stage that counts, the stage you got eliminated in. Uh, and for Vitality, nah, it's not good, really. Uh, spanked by Nip, comfortably beaten by Outsiders. They beat the bottom feeders of Liquid pretty comfortably. Um, but like I say, Liquid were pretty bad at this major. And Shox was fucking duty throughout the whole fucking thing. Um, he was a massive liability for Liquid during this major. Um... So that doesn't give you much credit if you're Vitality. They beat Big, yes, but I think Big, again, looked short, a bit deficient, and it was fucking... They squeaked it, you know? Um, could have 2-0'd it, theoretically, obviously, so on the one hand, but could have got 2-1'd easily. Uh, they fucking squeaked it over the line in this elimination series. They needed some big clutches from people like Dupree to get them over the line um, and even keep them in it and give them a 2-3 chance. And then, yeah, Heroic kind of, you know just beat them um it's not like worlds away but when you get 16 7 16 12 at, on the maps you lose and then the one you win you're you're just squeaking it over the line i think you probably can say yeah we were comfortably uh second best in that series and yeah i think vitality again i think the expectation would have been playoffs i think if you look at like they'd be looking at flames and say we should be making her even nip they should be looking at those teams and saying we got to make playoffs ahead of these guys. Nip have a brand new fucking team. Like they've just put Brolin in the roster. They have no proper Orpa. You know, Flames are, you know, they don't get anywhere near as much tier one exposure as we do. That it was disappointing for Vitality. They're getting an E from me. Honestly, I, I think this is a pretty poor resume. The only map wins they pick up or the only like map wins against decent teams, really, they picked up was one against Heroic. Like Big showed that they weren't, you know, really very good at this major. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say weren't very good, but they weren't good enough, clearly. Um, and Liquid were just doo-doo. You know, they got fucking spanked by everyone. So, yeah, E for Vitality, not good enough. Um, you know, there's so much, like, pedigree on this roster. But I, it just doesn't look like it's ever going to work, does it? it? It looks like there's just fundamental cultural, maybe, issues within the team. But there, there are definitely... Problems that I don't think they're going to overcome. Um, I suspect they limp along until the player break and we see a change because this just is not working quite clearly. Next, Imperial. Now, Imperial are going to get huge amounts of credit because they shouldn't have even gotten this far, probably. Um, I think before the tournament, most people were not expecting them to make this stage, but they did. Uh, they did so in very impressive fashion with some great series wins. I said we wouldn't talk too much about the stage before, but I think where teams have overperformed to even get this far, you have to mention it. As for the resume, the record they put together in this stage, uh, the old farts did pretty well. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I'm only joking. Uh, fully invested in this Imperial story. It was really cool. I wrote a pretty kind article about them um, and their sort of rivalry with our own nations before the MMR. Like, I was all on board this Imperial hype train. Don't you fucking worry. Um, you know, losing to Big and G2, it's not the end of the world. And it kind of looked like Imperial were just going to peter out um, to sort of what they should. Maybe they pick up a map or two in this stage, but don't get anything done. A relatively kind draw. I fully expected them and predicted them to beat Bad News Eagles 2-0. Um, it was close, uh, but Bad News Eagles have clear deficiencies as a team. Um, and Imperial... 
Imperial were really good in the series play, I think, particularly. Uh, for some reason, they seem to step it up when they got into the series versus best of ones. Um, their T sides were really cool to watch, very default heavy, very slow and methodical. Um, and they just had a clutch factor, and, and that veteran experience really shone through, I thought, with Imperial. Um, like here, squeaking over the line in a fucking quadruple pentuple overpass overtime. Um, bouncing back from like a not great vertigo to absolutely smash him on Mirage, like it, uh, impressive. And Cloud Nine would have been dark horses for a lot of people um, to go far in this tournament. Fur obviously has been a revelation, uh, not a revelation really, because obviously we knew how good Fur could be. But the fact that he's gotten back to something near his peak has been pretty fucking impressive. Um, in the end, they were relatively soundly beaten by Copenhagen Flames. Like it wasn't, um, obviously Vertigo wasn't like a smashing, but they got fucking bodied on Inferno. And I think we saw the deficiencies with Imperial. Um, yeah, Copenhagen Flames were, I think, in that top tier uh, or in and around that top. Uh, I guess if you put the top tier as like the top four teams, so Spirit Phase, Na'Vi and Ents, obviously. Then Copenhagen Flames were in that next tier down, and I think Imperial were in like the tier below that, if that makes sense. Um, so Imperial get huge amounts of credit. They exceeded expectations. They're going to get a B plus from me. I think this run was amazing. The fact they got within one series of the playoffs, admittedly they were relatively soundly beaten in that series. Um, obviously the second map going to overtime, super close, but they'd been spanked on the first map and really. Copenhagen Flames probably should have closed that Vertigo in regulation. But yeah, Imperial really well played. Great tournament from them. What a story. I hope we see this roster stick together maybe for the whole year and just really see what they can do with like a year under their belt. See if this was a flash in the pan or if there is something more there. Um, yeah, fucking you got to love it when the two time major winning core, they come back years and years after the fact and then still look pretty good. So Fair play to Imperial. Competitive at Tier 1, which I don't think when this roster was put together, very many people who weren't Brazilian thought was going to happen. So B+, plus, fair play. That's all I can say. Big. Oh, big or hard? Because I actually think, considering the form of the RMR, they look really potent. So I think expectations were slightly inflated in a lot of people's heads for this event. I probably would have said I didn't expect them i mean i didn't put them in my pickums to get through this stage um so i guess all i can give them is a c really um i think bigs run there's not really much to write home about like they got close in this vitality series and ultimately couldn't go out get over the line um they were pretty soundly beaten in these two series the one win they picked up was against a decent imperial side that's not like to be sniffed at but yeah, I think in line with my expectations, they weren't like completely blown out. They were reasonably competitive, but they didn't really get that close to qualifying C. I think this roster, especially considering they changed the coach just prior to the major and Farvin and Crimbo are still relatively new. Like they they get the next half of the year. The second part of the year is when I'm really judging big. I, I'm not judging them too harshly on, on this tournament performance, to be honest. Cloud9, get a fucking F. This was shit. Um, the only best of, they only win one best of one against the outsiders. They get beaten by Nip. They should be winning this. Nip have just added Brolan. Yes, it was close, but Inferno is one of Cloud9's better maps, theoretically. Yeah, apparently they miss vetoed Nuke here. They weren't supposed to. I don't know how true that is, but whatever. I'm okay to scratch this one off, but you should be beating Imperial. If you're Cloud9, you should be, especially in a series, you should be beating Imperial. And it really looked like boys versus men. And I think that is one of Cloud9's biggest problems. They're a relatively young team in general, but Nafany tilts off the face of the planet. It, it, I've seen it happen live in the flesh. I've seen Nafany tilt off the face of the planet. I think the other guys, like especially Inters and Axile, are very quiet. I think Hobbit, as much as he is an experienced head, and it probably does help, I don't think he is the most like powerful leadership figure. And I think that's Cloud9's problem is their mental game is just shot uh, like half the time. Since we've moved out of that online period when the pressure's on at LAN, you know, when people get under their skin at LAN and turn the screw, like they, they just fall apart. F, F, just not good enough. Cloud9 should be doing better. Top four team in the world coming into this. Yeah, this showing just isn't good enough.
Outsiders, um, they get a C for me. I wasn't expecting them to get through this stage and the team was dead. I think the team knew it was dead. I don't know if Buster knew he was getting removed, but Yekinder definitely knew he was going. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about their run because, like I say, it was a dead team and it was, you know, not very interesting. But they did whatever to get this far. I didn't expect them to go any further. C. They can just have a C. It's fine. It's whatever. Bad news, Eagles have to get a B, even though they just got dumped out of this stage fairly quickly. Didn't really um, look like doing too much damage in this stage. Um, clear deficiencies as a team for bad news, Eagles, right? I've said this uh, multiple times when talking about them, like on my Twitter and in this video here. Bad news, Eagles have two very key deficiencies. One, they play... I'm not trying to disrespect them by saying they play like uh, a pug team in the sense that I don't think they're like bad at all. I think they're good players. And I actually think some a lot of their team play was very, very good, it's like intuitive team play, just playing together, even if they didn't necessarily look like they had lots of set strats were very well drilled. What I mean when saying they look like a pug team is they look they just get impatient. It's almost like they get bored at times and you will see on ct side somebody gets caught out in the open rotating for no reason other than they've stood in their spot for 20 seconds not seen anyone it, it and look i could be wrong and it could totally it could actually be they just rotate poorly that could be the problem but it doesn't look like that to me it doesn't look like they're rotating based on calls and stuff it looks like someone gets itchy not seeing anyone for 20 seconds decides to change position to try and look for some info look for a fight and just gets caught that happened so many fucking times on Bad News Eagles CT side. I lost count of the amount of times they started around 4v5 just because somebody, you know, like there was one, for example, where um somebody was fucking chilling on Hut watching Door on Nuke. And it was like not even a minute left on the clock. It was like pre, you know, the clock going down to a minute and they're jumping off the roof and running across the open door and they just die. What the fuck are you doing? There was no reason for them to move. Even if they are going to move, why aren't you moving care more carefully and quietly? So that, I think, is a problem, and I think it ties in to the, the thing I'm going to talk about more generally, which is the second problem, attention to detail. They miss so many fucking grenades, and you could call this rotation thing an attention to detail problem as well. They're just not careful enough about the minutiae of the game, and Tier 1 are going to tear you apart for those kind of mistakes. But the amount of fucking grenades Bad News Eagles missed, Jesus fucking Christ, dude, it was embarrassing. I literally, in LE matchmaking see better grenade usage than bad news eagles some of the time fuck me dude those guys were missing smokes like it was going out of fashion at one point i was like trying to give him credit for doing weird lineups and stuff like oh it, like if they miss this smoke it encourages a peak and then they can no they were just missing smokes they were just whiffing them left and right man left and fucking right so yeah bad news eagles like they get a c just because they, if sorry, they get a B, in fact, because they overperformed by even getting this far, even though they went 0-3. They, they have to get a good grade because they managed to, making the major was an achievement. Getting to this stage in the major, like, well played, guys. That's all I can say, well played. Uh, Liquid. I don't know, man. I didn't expect them to do anything. They squeaked through the previous stage. I would say if you're probably li if you're liquid, I, I, by my expectations, I might even say they overperformed getting to this stage of the major. Um, but like, I think if you're that organization, getting legends is the bare minimum. I want to give them like a D because they were just not even really competitive at this stage. Like, you know, they just got comfortably brushed aside. Like they weren't completely blown out. They made it look like a game of Counter Strike. But they just were never in, like, there was never any threat they were going to win any of these games. I think by my own judgment criteria, I have to give them a C-, minus because I think getting to the legend stage is probably part of the course for expectations. <sighs> yeah, C-. minus. They can have a C-, minus, but it's a, like, it's a, a sad face C-. minus. You know, it's like a, that's a C-, minus, but I'm being generous that is it for this video boys and girls we will do one more on the challenger stage that will come in the near future 
What do you want to see for content? Let me know. I uh, love you all. Thank you so much for supporting me. It means a lot. If you did not like this, there, there are a few names that you could be. Um, I guess Vitality and G2 fans, you could be those guys. Um, you know, just fucking your team needs to get better, to be honest, mate. The amount of money and shit that's been spent putting these rosters together, not good enough. Uh, maybe you're a Liquid fan, you know, NA, lol. You're shit. That's all I can say. Uh, and anybody else who hated it, just like, whatever. You know, 